This war, like all wars, has casualties. Sometimes it's more than shrapnel. And one of the huge things that we're facing as a country is so many uh, veterans coming back with PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, Monday night when Mr. Clark was handing out the books, he had handed out a book on identity, and that's why I had to get to him. And I knew I could went to the bookstore and get it, but something kept telling me, no, you need to go ask Randy Clark what the title of that book was. And you need to ask him specifically. The crowds parted like the Red Sea, because I didn't know how I was getting here. And I asked him the title of the book, and he told me, and he said, well, why do you need it? I said, I lost my identity quite a few wars ago, and I was trying to find myself. But what was even better was that I think, I don't know, I'm speaking on your behalf, but I feel that he sensed that if he left me to wait for the team member, I was bolting for the door because I was scared, I was terrified, I was getting surrounded by the crowds, I was nervous, I wanted to get out of here, I was looking for a threat. But he didn't let me go, he took his mic off and he sat with me. Can't thank you enough for doing that for me. Before I go on, there is freedom in Jesus. I, I didn't come here to get prayer for PTSD. I've come here because I've been living with chronic nerve pain. I'm thinking, why do I have to deal with this PTSD? I came here for my nerve pain. God, what is going on? I want this pain out of my body because it's like cutting yourself with razor blades, having acid poured on your skin and your bones crushed 24 seven. You can't breathe. I couldn't play with my kids. I couldn't be with my wife. I lost my love of music because the, the, the sound and the vibration was so intense. I have to sit at the back of the church or by the exit I couldn't stand bright lights, so my senses kind of got dulled. All that's gone. Uh, Mike came and prayed for me, and he held onto my wrist, and I started to panic because I did not want to be restrained. And I think I could take Mike. He's a big guy, but I think I could take him, <laughs> even in my weakened state. But what Mike did for me and what Jesus did through Mike to me was he made me look at his eyes, and he wouldn't let me put my head down. And I kept wanting to put my head down because I didn't realize the guilt and the shame I was carrying from the horrific and horrible events that I cannot even put into words, nor do I want to, because I don't see those images anymore and I don't feel that pain. <laughs> On the 10th of January, I went to my doctor with my wife you know, I've been about a hundred different doctors and specialists for my nerves and the PTSD. And I asked them, I said, uh, does PTSD ever go away? You know, can it be cured? Is there medicine? What's the answer? Because, I, I, you know, I'm always thinking about taking my life. I'm always, and everything's intense for me and my family. And I said, no, you don't ever lose PTSD. Monday night, I, you know, I got prayer from Mike and as he was praying for me, I was crying, I was sweating, he, and I kept putting my head down. He said, look in my face. I said, don't tell me what to do. And <laughs> he's like, I'm not letting you go till you look at me. And so he just kind of walked me through the stages, and I can't even tell you what all of them were, but it was a short prayer. It was only five minutes. It wasn't nothing deep, but it was like Jesus was touching my hand, and he was speaking to me, and I felt a peace that I haven't felt since I was probably a young child. And I walked in the door of my house Monday night and I kind of floated in the house, I guess. <laughs> and my wife said to me, she said, babe, what happened? I said, I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> Let's stand and praise the Lord for days and freedom. <laughs> so happy for you. And you couldn't have normally got up in front of this many people and stood in the light, could you? Hey, man, you are free. Yeah. Okay. My wife told me, she said, babe, it looks like you've lost 2,000 pounds off your shoulders, and I don't know who you are. I've played with my kids. I've held them. I've hugged them. I haven't been afraid of what's on TV, what's outside. And even better, when I, before I came here tonight, I just got to say this, I was still having the pain in my wrist, but I said, God, you've been so good. You've already brought me through. You got me out of bed. You got me out of the wheelchair. You've got me off all these medications and narcotics. And tonight, when I go there, it's going to be done. 
And I don't need prayer because I'm just going there to glorify what you did for me. As I was sitting in the lobby over there at five minutes to six, I was sitting there waiting for him to open the doors. And all of a sudden, I felt my left hand. And I looked down and I was like, hand? You're back. And nobody prayed for me. There was no worship going on. I got on the phone and I called my wife and I said, thank you, Jesus. Not only am I at peace, I have no more pain. I can touch my hands. I can clap my hands. I can feel my fingers. I can dance. And the music didn't hurt me. The lights don't hurt me. The 